and set out. Come the kimmer in the darkness and day, close click it to dark's doom for, wild winter's brooket bairns, fresh fawn a war, says range and rise, blossoms bonny to scent and sicht, fierce fairlies after snow and sleet. Peak and pieces rise the reest in bulk and burl, wains wheel it and coarse cairns by the biggins, as our mild mead and prude pasture will walk our way. Fit says, force and green grass pure apart, gain git like grand again the rough road of heather hill and winter wood. Silver bark at birks, beak at the boot by a crazy, a crazy clan jamfrey of bursting buds, bursting buds, softly shine by your coarse cliff. It's a lovely picture of winter, uh, winter's end and spring happening there, which surprised me as a young man. You know, I was looking at it and saying, where did this come from? You know, have you been thinking that all these years and never telling me? Because he kept secrets. It wasn't until we were in our thirties, I think, he admitted that he started smoking when he was nine. <laughs> well, I never knew that. Nicking fags from my mother, you know. So, uh, you know, being a twin is not as though you it's not telepathy. And from, I, I think this revelation is not mine alone. I think there is a voice here that has not been repeated. He was an enthusiastic teacher. The people who have been his students speak very highly of his work. Um, he was adored as a teacher. And in much of his time as a writer in residence here or there, at Duncan and Jordiston and the Priest and Galloway and so on, uh, and working with writers' groups, um, he saw this as a very important part of his, uh, his function as he did as a poet of the parish. He was extremely proud of that. This will make a collected edition extremely difficult because he was asked in the village to produce poems for weddings, funerals, christenings and so on, and he did. He was profligate with them. You know, they're, they're scattered everywhere. How we're ever going to collect even a fraction of that, I don't know. But probably the, the Goldry Arms might be a good place. That was hardly his second home. <laughs> and, uh, However, I think um, I want to end um, in a minute with some left of the blood. Now, I'm not going to, I can't read the whole of the Corona, 144 lines, but it opens. In the silent left of the blood, the long drawn day, the long drawn day dees. Folk flock their hand to bed. And darkness resurrects its own cell with a turn of the earth and the universe. Waiting new, quiet like with fresh, the blind worm of time prays that sick will bring nothing that's averse to the tales he can tell. For fine he kens that it's no darby said that the moody but blind like the darkness sees in the silent list of the blood. As the long drawn day bees, Coolets fathom the depths of night. The wind's tides blether the back end branches, shaking the darkness that binds in them to snag the unkennin in the world of the wind. It's here, under the stairways, that the dwarmin do and pheasant, stertle to a scunner and scraken, brack the soft darkness to find the silence deep enough, never again to be the same. The air is in the blood, and flowing. It launches itself on a track for her to Herne's Hecht, where the long drawn day beats. For fine he kens, the blind one the time this is, for fine he kens, it no doubt be said, the cramacy of russet bloods on beaches, it's where fine ground sticks upon, blown off by the morn's worded soon, to be sealed by the nicht dropping licht. Bird's ee wings close over the cap, spelling the shape, the form of the unkent step, that cries the call of the fricted sit, sicht, and the warp of the weaver's windless wound. Now it is, and mech with the seat be shown, to evade with the blind dumb leeches, but fine he kens, it no doubt be said. In the silent licht of the blood, the long drawn day, these. <laughs>